my late night message to y'all. I know it's late and I don't even rock it, rock this late or do videos this late. But tonight, I had something like important to talk to y'all about. So I was like, you know what? I just got out of to go to sleep, my wife's sleep. And um, the importance of talking to your kids, communication with your kids, y'all. What? So, yesterday, yesterday night, my son asks me, I think it was yesterday. No, today's Saturday. So, Thursday night, my son asks me, I don't really be on this late. I, I, this is my time. I be relaxing with my kids. I watch the first 48. I'll rub my wife's feet or something like that. But, you know, Thursday night, I was in the game room. I was bringing, about to bring Byron upstairs. Blake was already upstairs. And Byron says to me, he says, Dad, will I ever be able to stand without using my walker? Go ahead, go on, close the door. Go ahead, I'm right here. I ain't going anywhere. Just lay down. Close the door. Close it more. Close it more. Go sit down. So they about to be knocked out in, in a couple minutes, but my son asked me Thursday night, right? He says, um, he says, Dad, will I ever be able to stand up without the walker? And it, and and it spun me for a second, like I I I was like, you know what, Byron? I was like, yes, you would, because I never want him to feel like it's hopeless. Like, I, I, I never want him to feel like he will never have a chance, right, at anything. So I told him, yes, Byron. So he says, um, will I ever be able, he asked me, will he be able to stand without the walker? And then he asked me another question, but it was in, in, in reference of, of walking or something like that. Will I ever be able to walk without using a buggy or something to that effect? I can't remember because there's so much went on within the last 48 hours. And I told him, yeah, you would. So he's like, if I get my bone infusions and I stay like doing the bone infusions and I stay eating healthy, he's like, it's a chance, right? Then I told him, yeah, of course there's a chance. I never ever want him to feel like no, so I always speak life over him. So tonight, right, he asks me, Dad, I want to play basketball. Like, I, um, what, um, he asked me, Dad, well, did you play basketball when you was a kid? That's for me, I played basketball. So he said, what team? So I said, I played for a team called the Junior Knicks. And, um, he said, how old was you? I said, anywhere between like 10, I mean, like 11, 12, 13. So he says, I want to play basketball, but what team would it be called? So I said, it'd be called the Junior Lakers, because I know he's a big-time Lakers fan. So he says, um, I bring him upstairs, and he says, Dad, like, why, why is it that when Blake was born, he can, like, now he's big, he can get up, he can stand, he can walk, he can do everything. I said, buy him. I said, you're different from Blake. You're different from Arvea. You're different from Christian. You're different from me. You're different from mom. But you're, in my eyes, a normal kid. You're a normal kid. So I told him, the difference between you and them, Byron, is that you have brittle bones, right? And so I said, say it back to me. He said, I have brittle bones. I said, say it back to me again, Byron. He said, I have brittle bones. So I told him, no matter what, Byron, no matter what, this is tonight, this is an hour ago I told him this. I said, no matter what, Byron, you're going to grow up, you're going to be amazing, even if some things are different from you. You're going to be amazing, you're going to be special, you're going to be an amazing man. 
He's like, when I'm 13, I want my own room. I said, you got to have your own room when you're 13. Right now, he sleeps on the other side of my room. So I told him, yeah, when you're 13, you have your own. But I just let him know. Then I looked at Blake. I said, Blake. Because I seen Blake was like looking at the, he's listening and looking at the conversation me and Byron's having. So I told him, Blake, I looked at him. I said, you're going to be amazing too. Don't you forget that. He said, thank you, dad. Or like he shook his head. Yeah. And I realized, so I went and talked to my wife, and I was like, you know, these last couple of days, Byron asked me a lot of questions. And she was like, he only comes to you with that. She's like, that's the special bond that you two have. And I said, um, I was like, you know, I don't know. I was like, I don't know why he comes to me like with these with these things. But I was like, but I always speak life over him. I never tell him you can't, you won't, it's not, no. I always say yes. You will, you can, I do all of that. So within the last 48 hours at night when everybody sleeps, because I'm always the last one to sleep in my house, I pray over my family, not standing over each one of them, but I pray over all of them. I pray for the hedge of protection over my home. I pray for Everybody to, to sleep peacefully through the night and through the morning hours. I pray that we all continue to stay healthy. I pray that our businesses continue to flourish. I pray that, you know, my asthma continues to stay in check. I pray just so many different prayers at night. But what I wasn't praying prior to this was that I wasn't praying just... I always pray that he continues to get stronger. That was always in my prayers. I pray every night I continue that Byron, I, I, I ask God, God, continue to let my son get stronger. Continue to just, you know, keep him in your in, in your eyes. And, and I pray for that. But what I started to incorporate in my prayers 48 hours ago, and I do it every night now since we had this talk, was that I pray that God answers his dreams. Because his dreams is to walk. His dreams is to, to play basketball. His dreams is to do things as a normal kid. So I look at him as a normal kid because I'm a special needs dad. And I, I try my hardest to give my son normalcy as possible. I don't care if we're playing basketball. No matter what it is, I'll let him go dunk it. I'll pick him up. I will do anything. Um, I'll do anything to put a smile on his face, right? So we could be at an amusement park, right? And I'm not talking about like a special needs amusement park. I'm talking about an amusement park that is a regular amusement park. And I'll search the whole park until I can find at least one ride that he can get on, that I can get on with him. So he can't get on. I won't do nothing that's never going to jeopardize his safety, but what I will do is I'll search around because he'll be wanting to get on. Dad, I want to get on the ride too. Of course. I'm like, of course. I'm just waiting until I can find one, Byron. And I will wait until I find it. And when I find it, I will not even hesitate a minute to put him on that ride so he can just be joyful, can be happy, can feel like no, a regular normal kid. Like, you know what I'm saying? So we went to Pigeon Forge in Tennessee. And um, they didn't have a whole bunch of kitty rods there, as you can say. But he looked at the Ferris wheel, right? And he said, Dad, I want to get on that. I never even been on a Ferris wheel in my life as an adult. I never been on a Ferris wheel ride. So he's like, I said, you want to get on that? He said, yeah. So we got on it. I'm nervous. But he wasn't. And he wanted to get on it. And it was like an experience. I'll never forget because it was something he wanted to do. So I have the video of it. I think I posted it as a real, but I never really posted the video. Like I never, it's in one of these somewhere I have, but I just never posted it. Like, but I will try no matter what it is. We went to another regular park somewhere. And he got nervous as soon as he seen all the rides, but he wanted to go so bad. He said, Dad, I just want to eat ice cream and popcorn, and you guys get on the rides. And I'm like, all right, cool. So I was like, before we leave, I was like, I'm going to take you on one ride, though. I went and talked to the guy. I was like, listen, I got a special new son. I see that this ride is like, it's, if I hold him, I know I can get on with him. And um, 
He's like, yeah, I, I think you could do it. I was like, let me look. I went, I scoped the rod out. I seen that if I just hold him, he can spin around the thing with me and I got him and we did it. And I was happy and I just, I want him to always experience normalcy. So I told him tonight, I was like, you know, you love to play basketball? Great, right? And I, I always speak life, but I always try to be a realistic person with him too. So I tell him, you know, Byron, I said, do you know, Byron, that they have like, they have, uh, they have people that play basketball in the wheelchair. Like, you know, I've seen it before, like when I, where I grew up at, like I've seen it, it's all over, I've seen it. I said, Byron, you know that they have people that play basketball in wheelchairs? He's like, really, Dad? I was like, yeah, they do. Of course, I want him to walk, but I also have to put that in his head just, just in case. But I always say, you're going to walk. You're going to do this. You're going to do anything. I have this picture in my phone for maybe four years. And it's of a kid. You can't see his face. You can't tell his background. You can't tell if he's black. You can't tell if he's white. You can't tell if he's Asian. You can't tell if he's anything. Because it's just like a dark picture. But it's a kid. And he got like the the, the things that, that, that go to your arm so you can walk, right? And for whatever reason, I saw this picture about four years ago. And it's in one of my old phones, not one of these new phones that I have now. But I always saved that picture. And for whatever reason, it spoke volumes to me. Like, like I hope. I don't know if it was just I hope I see him do this. But when he said it to me on Thursday, like it, it, it's, I'm so passionate about it that it'll bring tears to my eyes. Like, because... I always say, like, I'm, I'm his legs. I always say that, Byron. I'm your legs. Until, until you can walk, I am your legs. So he be like, Dad, I want to walk around. I could be tired. I'm like, oh, man, Byron, Daddy's tired. He's like, you're always tired. And I'll get up, and I'll hold him, and I'll walk around the house with him. Just because he just wants to just get around. He wants to look around. He wants to just... Get around, you know what I'm saying? So I'm super passionate about all of them, but I realized tonight just communication with your kids is like is is very important. It's very important. So I, I was so happy to even tell Blake that. And I was like, you know what? Blake, you're special too. Don't just because you see me talking to Byron and, I, and my conversation isn't directed towards you. You are special. You're amazing, man. He's like, thank you, Dad. And I was like, I was like, I gotta start talking to my kids a little bit more, as far as just encouragement, as far as just giving them, speaking life over them. You know what I'm saying? Not saying that I don't ever speak life. I talk to my kids all the time, but sometimes just those little conversations don't mean the world to me. So I know it mean a lot to them. And sometimes we, as parents. We get caught up doing everything else. I got my baby. I'm caught up with trying to shoot videos. I'm caught up with doing this, doing that, doing this. And I'm like, damn, sometimes I got to just have small conversations with them. And, and, and in those conversations, it's about letting them know you're the best. You could do anything you want. You could achieve anything you want. So the, the more they start to hear that, the more they start to, to like feel that the more they start to like they start to speak that because i'm speaking life over them you know and i was like you know what i was sitting there my daughter's crying i had the phone ready to go live all i do is press the button i was like i'm ready to record right all i do is press the button but i was like i really want to just get this out there I was like i know it's saturday it might be people partying i might not have catch the crowd that i want but i said to myself before i started this video if i could reach one person then my job is done I don't have to talk to 7,000 people. I don't have to talk to a million people. All I got to do is reach one person to be like, you know what? You're right. I got to start talking to my kids more. I got to be more active in my kids' lives. I got to do this. I saw a video this morning from a guy, and he was like, stop giving your kids the phone. Stop giving your kids this. And and thinking like, like wait, the phone... Has, has now become the new parent. The tablet becomes the new parent. The game becomes the new parent. 
and then and then you expect different results, but you're not active. So I was like, you know what? I start talking to them at night now, so they go to sleep with that with with those with those words I'm speaking over them, not just during the day, but just talking to them at night before they lay down. Letting them know you, you can do anything you want. You can achieve anything you want. Anything. Just keep your mind on it. Stay positive. And you can do it. And my son, because he asks us a lot of questions. He's seven. So he wants to know. And I never ever feel like I want to tell him something that's not true. I don't never want to I don't never want to tell him no. I don't never want to tell him you can't. I never want to tell them, no, no, Byron, no, what, no. Then he's going to feel defeated as a kid. No, so what I tell him is, yes, you can. I started charging his buggy, even though he hurt his neck, so I can't get him in it now. But I was like, I got I want him to, to start getting around. I got to start putting him in the walk or more. So I talked to my wife about it two days ago. After Byron had me and him had the first conversation, and I was like, you know, when we were living in New Jersey, I was doing physical therapy for him, and the experience was like left. It was like so so because sometimes the lady would overwork him, and then he would hurt his leg or he would break a bone. I'm like, no, like I want physical therapy, but I don't want intense physical therapy. So I told him tonight. I said, Byron, you know what? How about until we figure this thing out when I go to the doctor, I speak to your doctors, because I don't want to go. I was I was fighting the dilemma of, do I go to Atlanta once or twice a, a week for physical therapy, or can somebody come to my house, right? Because I have my daughter, they're in school. I, it's just a lot, you know? With them being in school, it's, a, it's hard for me to go to physical therapy right after school. And like, it's just, so it's just a lot going on. I got Christian who still has to come home. You know, we still keep our eyes on Christian. Thank God he hasn't had any seizures or anything, but I still have to keep my eyes on him. So I was like, you know, I want to ask his doctors in the next couple of weeks. I'm supposed to see them. Is it possible two days out the week, one day would be the weekend because that really would suit, it'll, it'll keep his school on track can somebody come out twice a week and let's do physical therapy we tried the water therapy over the summer and to be honest it started good and then it turned out to be a disaster and i have to be honest i'm sorry the disaster part of it was he got hurt and the ladies acting like they didn't really know what they were doing. So I'm bringing them and it's okay. And then he gets hurt. And then he starts, I don't want to go there. They're like, they, I don't want it. Like he's, he got so scared after being comfortable because they hurt him that he didn't want to go there. And I thought it was great, but if it's going to be at the cost of him getting hurt, then it's not great. He shouldn't never be in fear to go to physical therapy. It should be like, he's welcoming a challenge. You know what I'm saying? So I, I want to really, I'm his advocate, me and his mom. I'm his legs. I always say that until he can walk. I'm, I'm everything, me and his mom. But I really want physical therapy, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak to his two doctors, his main primary doctors about that in the next couple of weeks. And I'm just going to do more. I'm going to do more. So you'll start to see him more in his walker. You'll start to see more of him riding his buggy. You'll start to see a little bit more of independence for him because he needs that. He wants that. So that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. But the message tonight is just the importance of communicating with your kids, speaking to your kids. It's so important to speak to your kids.